Welcome to the channel, YouTube World. Another Borderlands 3 update hotfix slash 1.03. As usual, if you don't want to hear me going yep, 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 a link in the description will be posted down below with the official patch notes from uh, Borderlands' own website. And you can uh, read them on your own. So, let's get into it, shall we? Borderlands 3 patch and hotfixes for October 3rd, 2019. Today, we'll release both a patch and a hotfix for Borderlands 3 on all platforms by or before 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, Pacific Daytime. Anyways, with the patch addressing a number of reported concerns and the hotfix focusing on player character balance changes and tuning of some enemies and bosses. First up are the actual patch notes. Stability. Addressed a reported issue where an infinite loop could occur when hitting the Guardian rank experience ceiling. I know nothing about that. General fixes and improvements. The Hollow Point Guardian rank will no longer damage allies. Hollow Point Guardian rank still has been re-enabled. Addressed a reported issue where some players were unable to unlock the ultimate Vault Hunter achievement on Xbox. That's because Xbox sucks. I'm just kidding. Calm down. Addressed a reported issue where mouse functionality may have been lost when hot joining a friend session on PC. So much for PC being the master race, eh, bitch? I'm just kidding. Addressed a reported issue where some players' inventory would not be saved in their bank. Ooh. They must have been doing, doing something bad that deserve that. This week's Borderland 3 hotfixes, which will be live on all platforms by or before 3 p.m. Pacific time today, contain some player character balance changes and addresses some player reported concerns regarding enemy behavior. They're self-aware, they're coming to get you. And your guns, your bank that's empty, that didn't save, they got them. Our goal is to make sure all three action skills for each Vault Hunter are viable, but we have noticed some skills have been outperforming others. I wouldn't know anything about that. To encourage more build diversity, we made some adjustments to Flack and Mosey this week. It better be good, or somebody going to get to hurt real bad. Or I'll pull out my Batman mask and I'm going to take someone down to justice. We also looked at a few boss fights and made balance changes to make their combats more enjoyable. Didn't realize bullet sponging was enjoyable. Finally, we went over some enemy behaviors that could have affected mission progression and adjusted some attacks to happen with more frequency. Vault Hunter Adjustments Flak, you know, the guy that 99.9% .9 of people use. Rack Attack is great for constant damage output, especially when paired with Anointed Gear. The base skill still seems to be lacking, so Rack Attack now has a guaranteed status effect on any enemy that it damages. Leave No Trace was returning much more ammo than intended, and we have added a re-trigger delay to keep its ammo return within expectation. Barbaric Yop has an increased bonus, as we didn't feel that the amount of investment had an equal payoff. In addition, we felt that Flak's pet were demanding too much attention. That's an understatement. Which was interfering with players trying to stand still for any length of time, so we disabled the ability for them to move you around. Good. Rack Attack. Status effect change has been increased to 100%. Leave no trace. Now has a re-trigger delay of 2 seconds. Barbaric Yop. Stat bonus increased by 100%. Pets no longer push around player characters. Touch pet prompt is now a lower priority and should no longer interfere with looting or vending machines. Mosey. Infinite grenades is not an intentional build for Mosey, even if it's hilarious. To lower the power and spam of this build, a re-trigger delay has been added to the grenade portion of Means of Destruction. Well, in order to have a proper means of destruction, we need the infinite grenades. Means of destruction now has a retrigger to live two seconds. Miscellaneous changes adjusted the balance of Gigamind, Katagawa Ball, and Billy the Anointed. Those anointed enemies, holy cow, some of them were more painful, more dangerous, took longer to take down than some bosses. That makes no sense. These three boss fights had concerns with their health and shields that made their combat loops more difficult than we intended. Gigamind had a little too much health 
So that was reduced slightly. Katagawa Ball will no longer regenerate its shield. We found that while players contended with the adds during the fight, it would unfairly regenerate its shields. I absolutely agree. Negating the player's progress. Finally, Billy had 25% of his health removed. We agree that this fight often dragged on needlessly. It did. We will be monitoring each of these bosses and may make further adjustments in the future. Bloated racks no longer spawn so many rackle snakes. Ah, this change should make the cistern of slaughter, in particularly, in particular, much more fun. Adjusted the cooldown values when they are displayed for Zane's skills. Amara's Glamour will now turn enemies on each other as described in the action skill. Modified the loot spawn for Sarah of Supremacy. Spider Ant Emperors occasionally wouldn't drill back out of the ground, which created a potential progression blocker in the Proving Ground of Survival. We have adjusted this and the issue has been addressed. Resolved an issue that could have prevented enemies from spawning while in Devil's Razor. Lavender Crawly physics were adjusted to prevent them exiting the world like a popped balloon. <laughs> that was funny. Further safeguarded Apollo from being launched out of world as well. The Rampager will no longer enter an idol at state at inappropriate times. Saurian Slingers attacked were addressed. Guardians now use all of their attacks in playthrough 2. Guardian Wraiths now reliably use all their ranged attacks. NPCs in the slaughter maps were reported to sometimes attempt to automatically revive players in the arena. Going forward, they will no longer attempt to revive players. Minimize the glow effect when opening Iridian ammo chests. Can more easily see the ammo inside when opened. That's it? That was a fairly short video, and I'm really, really happy about that. Because I like making these videos. But I don't like it when it's so long to read the patch notes. Anyhow, let's just end it. As always, updates are permanent. Hot fixes need to be connected to the internet. If you unconnect from the internet, nothing that's been done in hot fixes will apply to your game. So as always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up or two. If you didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. And I'll just make sure when you play the game, I take all your shit. I remove all your guardian tokens. And uh, you go into negative. And then your character gets deleted. Permanently. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, of course that would be wonderful. And if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, boys and girls, or whatever you identify as. And I shall see you all in the next video. Bye now. By the way, I only had to catch my breath three times during this entire rant. Just saying.